Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and welcome to lesson four of our wire wrapping master course. Um, this is a free series, completely free. Um, like you don't have to be signed up for anything. You don't have to be subscribed to the channel, nothing. We just wanted to provide you guys with a resource that takes you through what we've taught in the past. Like we have over 800 tutorials on our YouTube channel and it can get a little bit muddy trying to like find, you know, you're brand new to this, you know, it's like, well, what should I learn first? And so we wanted to take you guys through a guided comprehensive course of foundation techniques that will build on each other to take you guys from complete beginner to having taught you everything that I know. So that being said, today we are going to tackle spirals, which seems to be one of the things that challenges um, a lot of wire wrappers, sometimes just at the beginning of their journey, sometimes it plagues them through their entire journey. Um, and that's okay. It's when we're new to something, we're kind of supposed to be bad at it, you guys. Like, cut yourself a break. Before we even pick up our pliers, cut yourself a break and go into this being like, we're going to make some messes. And that's okay. <laughs> so if you followed along with us in our past three tutorials um, for the wire wrapping master cl classes, uh, you should have a little bit of scrap wire on hand. And uh, that is what we're going to just let me grab a couple more pieces out of I just keep like a whole drawer in one of these like uh, drawer carts that you can get at like Michaels and stuff. Um, and so we're going to be using predominantly, I'd recommend 20 gauge. I always recommend a folks para wire because this is something that the material that you use can be completely sabotaging your entire efforts whenever it comes to making spirals. Because if you're using something like a half hard or full hard silver or a uh, stainless or surgical steel wire or titanium or even sometimes brass, um, you'll have a lot of what, what I call what, what's called spring back. Um, I don't know if everybody calls it that, but I've heard the term used quite a few times, um, like from other. Uh, metalsmiths and artisans spring back is what holds the tension in a safety pin so it's like you try to make it stay right there and unless you have something holding it it's going to want to return to the rest of its position now you can take something like this and over bend it significantly but you run into problems with brittleness and all sorts of different things. So that's why I don't recommend stiff, um, springy wires for this purpose, for making spirals. You want something that whenever you take it and you make a bend in it, it stays where you've bent it. So uh, go ahead and test out your wire, just even with just your bare hands, and just try it. Whenever you bend it, does it stay where you put it? Because if it doesn't, that wire is going to be working against you and while it's still very possible to still wire wrap with wire like that it's something that you'll need to take into consideration and quite frankly whenever I was very first starting out I didn't even know that that was the thing that I needed to watch out for I just thought I was exceptionally terrible and if I changed wire and it was springier and I didn't realize it I just thought I was getting worse which is not what you want when you're a beginner you want like baby steps and like little accomplishments and like things to keep you encouraged as you do you know something that's challenging so that being said, uh, test out your wire. I use almost exclusively ParaWire brand because you can get it in a broad cut. This isn't sponsored, by the way. Um, we don't like being paid to have opinions, uh, even by companies that we love. Um, but it's they it it's been amazing, you guys. I've been using their wire in our work for over a decade. I have pieces that I wear myself with my and I have very acidic skin that have held up fantastically. Um, we've never had any complaints from our customers, and uh, and we provide free repairs on all of our work, and that's very easy to stand by because we don't have to worry about the para wire tarnishing or chipping or you know turning people's skin green or anything like that. Now, if you get bare copper wire it's copper just turns folks green some folks don't have any reaction with it some folks just turn green the second they look at it so um that's just that's not a reflection of the quality of the wire that's just a property of that metal 
Now, I am also going to be demonstrating some stuff using some uh, aluminum wire. This is aluminum that's been anodized. Uh, you can get anodized aluminum in a lot of different colors. They have it on parawire.com with their different, um, it's like craft wire, and you can select the aluminum stuff. Um, and it's super supple. So like this one here is a 16 gauge American wire gauge, which all the gauges that we're talking in today are American wire gauge. Um, so hopefully that's helpful to you guys. Again, if you have any questions, uh, either ask here in the premiere chat, hey everybody in the premiere, or if you weren't able to watch this during the premiere, um, you can leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to help you out. Or you can even send us an email at backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com. And, uh, and we'll try our best to be helpful to you. But if you are just starting out and you're wanting to build up the strength in your hands, aluminum wire can be a really good option. But we're going to be using 20 gauge in enameled copper and 16 gauge in anodized aluminum. But I also have some 18 gauge scrap. That we're going to be using so now we'll be getting into the tools completely optional is a hammer and bench block that way you can flatten out your spirals or um you'll give it some texture and different things like that and also i'm gonna have to grab it just a sec a ring mandrel is a really good idea um now if you don't have a ring mandrel and you do want to make we're going to be making a ring in this tutorial as well. Uh, if you don't have a ring mandrel, you could use like the handle of a spoon, like a cooking spoon. You could use the cap on bottles or the neck on bottles, just whatever is about the size of what you want your ring to be. You can just use that. So like wooden dowels are an option, but honestly, one of these is like, you can get them anywhere from like maybe 15 to $25. Uh, depending on like if you have a coupon and you're shopping at Michael's or Joann's or like do they even do coupons anymore I don't know I don't know uh, but it's they're they're pretty affordable all tools are an investment but you're investing in yourself and your creative future so if you ever plan on making rings this tool makes such a difference I like getting the metal ones because I can hammer on them um, though I do have a plastic one that I enjoy as well for whenever I'm working with softer stones. <clears throat> and then from there we have, I'm going to be using two different sizes of round nose pliers. This one is a little bit larger of a tip. Let's go ahead and zoom in just a bit. I am going to apologize in advance if I wander out of screen. I try my best to not do that. I've done methods where I'm taping on my table to try to get myself to stay in a frame. And what happens is I'll just be concentrating on something. And like right now, I'm looking through the window on uh, like, well, my camera is my phone. So I'm looking at my phone screen. And but sometimes I'll get really into it. And with my bad eyesight, I'll just start getting a little zoom like and I'll be right here. I try my best not to. I'm constantly working on it, but I thank you guys in advance for your patience. So this one here is my regular pliers. Whenever I've, I've mentioned this in previous classes, but in case this is your first time with us, anytime I'm shopping for pliers, I try to get a box hinge as opposed to a scissor hinge. Um, especially on tools like round nose pliers where I'll be adding, like they're getting a lot of pressure from the sides as well. It's not just applying between the jaws it's there's a twisting motion having that box hinge there keeps me from I don't know how many pairs of pliers I've burnt through where I've just busted that bolt that uh goes through the center it's not as big of a deal on wide flat nosed pliers like these ones here but um for something like these guys again that box hinge makes such such a big difference and so these are both of my round nose pliers and all of the tools and materials that I'm using here are linked down in the video description and those are there to help get you guys started shopping but also if you purchase anything through those links um, it helps support the channel at no additional cost to you so we really appreciate that and then these are my new nylon jaw pliers that I have been using the heck out of and they have not even barely started to have any kind of tooth to the plastic like the rubber jaw on them at all i'm so so pleased and these were like eight bucks um 
And then if you want some beads, just make sure that they are whatever size, uh, like whatever size or color or shape of bead you want to be using. Just make sure that it fits very comfortably onto your wire. You don't want any kind of, if it's hard to put the bead onto the wire and then you twist and bend the wire, it's going to break the bead. Um, even if it's gemstone or glass or what have you, uh, just that internal pressure. It's like cracking out of an egg. Uh, it just breaks. So that being said, let us go ahead and actually get started. Um, so, oh, and uh, wire snips. You got to have something to cut it off of the spool. Um, so we are going to begin with um, just a basic tight spiral. And this is something that it's... Um, this builds on the technique for making loops from our wire wrapping lesson one within the master class series so we will be putting the wire as close to the tip of the pliers and as close to the tip of the wire as we can and it's in this beginning loop if you get too close to the end it'll just pinch off uh, and slide so you want to come in just enough that you can actually grip and this is the part, like, this loop right here sets the tone for the entire rest of the spiral. Because what I'm shooting for is just a super tight little whoop, and then we can build on that. And I'm going to demonstrate first how I ideally I like to go about it, and then we're going to troubleshoot with all the stuff that can go wrong. So if you're having difficulty, um come in a bit from the tip of your pliers. It doesn't have to be all the way to the super duper tippy tip. And so once we start getting just a little bit of wire around, we can take our nylon jaw pliers and I'm going to grasp and we're going to zoom in real, real tight on this because I want you guys to be able to see what's going on. Um, so that's our loop, and if you see right here, right where that, this wire is diverging, right there is where we want to be gripping with our pliers and pressing up and around. And it's kind of difficult at first because you want there to be enough of a spiral that you can hold on to, but I'm just gripping and pressing around and we're going to be stacking, like making a cinnamon roll. Maybe it just keeps twisting it around. So in that case, let's go ahead and use something uh, that's going to grip a little tighter. So I'm actually just using the boxed part of the hinge on my larger round nose pliers, and that's going to hold it without any movement. Now I just want to be careful because I don't want to be squeezing so hard with my pliers that it's biting the wire, um, which is why when this gets a little larger, we'll move back up to those nylon jaw pliers. But here at the beginning, there might just not be enough material for the pliers to hold on to. So again, I just rotate to right before the pliers diverge, and then I'm pressing up, you rotate, putting it back right there, again just like that and we start building so you can see how that's looking a little chewed up and that's okay but now we can fit it into our nylon jaw and grip and bend and grip and bend and grip and bend there is no point in rushing this And this makes a really nice little spiral for, um, I don't know, just if you want like a nice tight little spiral. You could make spiral head pins with something like this. So you could spiral about that much <laughs> and then grasp with your pliers and do a bend so that it's like a lollipop on a stick. And if you made two of these and had them be mirror image of each other, so like one that way and one that way, uh, this would be perfect for just threading a bead on, doing a wrapped loop at the top, and boom, we've got some earrings. Boom. 
<laughs> so, um, but yeah, so that's one way. And you could make this, I'm just going to leave that little kink in there. Um, you can put your pliers down and just use your fingers and grasp and turn and grasp and turn. Because the goal here is to make a two-dimensional, very flat, if we can manage it, spiral. And we can build this up in size all day long. And so um, from here, though, you'll notice how if, the, if you're getting little spaces and you don't really like that, that usually happens from if you grab with your pliers or your fingers beyond where the wire has diverged. Normally, I'd say, you know, let's grab it there and bend it around and it keeps it very snug the whole time. If you bend over a little too much, you can just flatten it out with your pliers. But if we come and put it right here, so well past where that wire has diverged and then bend around, it's going to make space. Like there's going to be distance that's starting to build. And so that's something that it's not at all wrong to do it like this. There, there's no right and wrong with something like this. If it looks the way that you wanted to, if it's holding together, and if it's comfortable to wear, then you did it correctly. Like there's no like right and wrong way. Um, for me, so long as it meets those criteria, because you don't want your jewelry falling apart on you or on your customers. You don't want it, you know, poking your skin or snagging your clothing. Um, and you know, you want it to match the vision that you had in your mind when you started creating it. Um, so if all of those things line up, then you did it right. And even that last one, it matching what you had visualized, eh. <laughs> you know, just cause it doesn't match. Like when I'm creating something, if it doesn't match what I wanted to make, that does not at all mean that it's not good and that it's not, you know, something that somebody else might think is perfect. So, uh, more often than not, I try to just let it be what it's going to be. Cause while this might not be what I was going for, you know, a perfectly tight little spiral, it might be somebody else's just like, oh my god, that's so cute, I love it. So, and who am I to say whether that's right or wrong? <clears throat> so that's a little bit of troubleshooting on that one. Now, the next thing that we're going to address, we're going to do a little bit more of this 20 gauge. Eh, is this 20 gauge? No, that's 18 gauge. Well, we're going to use the 18 gauge. And one of the problems that I see pretty frequently, I'm going to zoom back in, is in my own work, whenever I'm starting a spiral, if I come in and I'm holding, like, say, like, right here, and I bend around, doing a full rotation on the loop, this beginning part being pinched, or actually that one came out really nice. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> I'm just trying to demonstrate it being like terrible. Um, and it, this isn't terrible, but like right here, that part is a little straighter than what I might have wanted. And so what can happen whenever you do that is, and again, this isn't really, we'll try the other end. <laughs> so we can almost, uh, Okay, so we come in and we bend like that, and then we grab maybe with a smaller part of the tip. Even Okay, yeah, this one might demonstrate a little bit better, but how it's just very straight right there on that part. And then so we're curling around. And even that, I'm not like unhappy with it. Oh, this isn't. <laughs> this is actually a lot harder to demonstrate than I thought. Um, so I'm actually going to use different pliers for this. But let's grab with a flat nose plier. So like sometimes having a very, very flat side can throw off your whole spiral. And so just pay attention to the loop shape that you're initially making. 
because it, it, whenever you're troubleshooting something, like, don't just be like, oh, that sucks. And like, throw, no, it's like, well, okay, what sucks about it? Like, did it get chewed up by your pliers? Um, are you not happy with that internal shape? Is the distribution, like, did it start out okay, but it started getting wobbly? Like, these are the things that if you're going to give yourself constructive criticism, you need to actually pinpoint what the things are that are challenging for you or that you don't like about your work at the moment. And then that gives you something that you can work on as opposed to, you know, if it's just like, well, it sucks. I suck. You know, I shouldn't even try. And it's like, no. Not at all. Like, did you give up after the first time you fell down when you were learning to walk? I hope not. You know, so it's just keep at it. It's a, uh, I've actually lately, I've been calling it the PP path because <laughs> it makes me laugh. A practice and persistence or practice and patience, whichever one you, you, you need more. <laughs> so, cause persistence, I think takes patience, but just keep at it and you'll get to where your spirals start being more what you wanted them to be. So the next spiral shape, we went over a nice tight coil. So for the next one, it has to make like a very organically shaped um, spiral. Again, grasping as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the tip of the pliers as I can. I'm going to just, it's this very much a vroom vroom hand motion. So I like to work away from me, um, but that's just me. Uh, the, you could do this working towards you too. So I'm going to be grasping and holding and I use my, my, the finger of my other hand to press against and this helps me to make my spiral be nice and flat as opposed to it like growing out three dimensionally. and. We're going to turn whenever my hand gets to where it can't turn my knuckles away from me any further. I let go with my left hand, rotate back around, or my non-plier hand, and I'm just grabbing and repositioning and doing that same spiral again. Now right here you can see the nose of my pliers are starting to get into the way. And so that's something that um, I'd like to avoid, so I'm going to reposition my pliers on the spiral trying really hard to not squeeze it to death like I don't want to be if you squeeze hard enough you can really whoop, I threw it on the ground there we go um, if you squeeze it hard enough you can really bite into that wire and that's just something to watch out for but we'll reposition it and then continue around and again, I'm using my supporting finger to control the pressure and then repositioning again and bringing it around. And this will come with practice, it, it will. Um, and so just like how on this one, whenever you want that nice tight spiral and you'd come to right before where the wire diverges, with this one to keep that continuous uh, distribution going I'd actually grab it and then bend just enough and then turn and bend and turn and bend Oop, too much and turn and bend and so it becomes more of just trying to maintain the distance in between the wires and it's easier said than done but again practice 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 <laughs> so um yeah, hopefully, I, I really do hope that that's helpful to you guys. There's very few things that can replace um, getting hands-on experience with this. And um, like it, it, if you're new to spirals, just every bit of scrap wire that you have, practice making spirals um, with that. Because if you're just going to be melting it down or... Um, maybe uh, taking it to a scrap metal place to get money for the copper or, you know, or sending it to a refinery or something like whatever it is that you decide to do, it's going to get you the same <clears throat> amount of metal back, whether you're sending it to a refinery as a straight piece of scrap or as a spiraled piece of scrap. But at least this way you were able to get more practice out of it. So having gone over that, the kind of 
the basics of spirals, um, let's go ahead and start making some stuff. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to be using, this is just some 18 gauge, but you can use whatever gauge you have on hand. Um, I don't recommend anything thinner than maybe a 22 gauge for this, just because it gets uh, difficult to get it to, to keep it maintaining its shape. You know, I thought I was going to use 18 gauge, but I don't think I can fit my beads on here. So we're going to go with a thinner gauged wire, so we're going to be using the 20 gauge. And I'm going to go ahead and snip myself off about 5 inches. And we're going to make a simple spiral, like a basic tight coil spiral with a bead. So this is something that we're going to do an itsy bitsy spiral. And so putting our bead on at about the inch and a quarter, let's go inch and a half mark. I'm putting my finger beneath the bead and on top of the bead. And I'm holding on with my middle finger and thumb on both hands. And right now it does not matter which finger you have on top. But if you want to mirror image, like, you'd just start with the other finger on top. I hope that that makes sense. And we are just going to go whoop and trade which finger's on top. And here you can see that made just a little loop with our bead on it. And then we'll put it back to its starting position, put our fingers together, and whoop, do it again. And this, y'all, is like... The most foolproof way of making uh, what I call inline spirals. Uh, some folks call it vining, um, but you can make these very, very, once you have that first two loops down, you can just grasp the wire and continue building a spiral around it. And now if we wanted to add a second spiral in line to this, we're just going to thread on another bead. And you can do this without beads as well. Um, definitely, you can do this without beads. And I'm just going to displace it off to the side just enough. And I want the spiral going in the other way, so I'm going to have my left hand on top this time. Fingers together on the bead. And... Whoop! Bead slipped out, that's okay. Sometimes it can go a little three-dimensional. See how it's kind of got that space there? So we'll just push the bead back into place. And you could use your fingertips or you could use your pliers to just smush that wire together like that. And then return to your starting position and shape around. And now from here, we can actually backtrack just a little bit, twisting that in. And so this could be a way, let's bring this tail of wire up that away. And then we have this one right here. Let's make a little spiral on the tip. So again, as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the tip of the pliers as I can. Just making that loop, turning around and bringing it on in. And I just open my pliers, move them a bit, twist it around, open, grab, twist it around until it's in line with where I'd like it to be. And now from here, we could do a wrapped loop. I don't quite have enough wire for that, so I'm just going to do a doubled loop. So I'm just rotating that in. Again, this is building on techniques that we've covered in earlier masterclass courses. So if you're just popping in on this one, I really do recommend, even if you're an experienced wire wrapper, it's, you're, I'm never too uh, experienced to revisit my foundation and fundamental techniques, regardless of whatever craft that I'm doing. If you can polish up your foundations, um, all of your work will benefit from that. So this little piece here, you could make this a little bit larger and attach a bale and have it be a pendant. You could make two of these and have them be earrings. This could just be a very nice petite little pendant. Um, you could put a ring through this end and this end and make it a bracelet link for like a charm. 
uh, in a bracelet, like bringing them together, the, the possibilities really are endless. And with literally your scrap wire, if you have anything that's, you know, um, let's just make another spiral here with this one. This is some 16 gauge uh, wire. This is a good example. Haha. -ha. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, a good example of messing up. Like, I'm trying to get kind of sloppy with it. And, um, but yeah, just how the loop isn't coming together. That's not my favorite. It's kind of chewed up some. So you can actually come in and snip, remove a little bit of your wire um, there in the tip. And I personally prefer closed loops at the inside of my spirals just because I wear a lot of knit clothing and um, I don't really like for my wire wrapping to get tangled in knit or lacy clothing. So we can just close that loop and tighten it down just a little bit and continue. So that's super cute. I like that. And we can smush it. Smush, smush, smush. And then we can make a loop just a little farther up. And now I'm going to hold it with my nylon jaw pliers and just deepen that around the rest of the way. Smush, smush, smush. Work hard in it just a bit. And so, like, again, you could turn all of your scrap wire into charms, little spiral charms, and it might be difficult to get them to match perfectly, um, but there's no reason why you can't um, make, like, an asymmetrical pair of, like, shaggy earrings that are just made out of a whole bunch of random spirals uh, pieced together with jump rings or uh you know just kind of a, a little bit of a chaos <laughs> uh piece or a charm bracelet that's nothing but spirals that were made from scrap wire like it's you can really really get creative with this stuff so yeah how i would do this is i would just take a jump ring and like attach it between those two, maybe attach it between those two, maybe do multiple jump rings. So sky's the limit on those ones. And so now that we've done, and five inches did not get us very far. Like this, this design does eat up wire. Um, and that's okay. It's just something to be mindful of. Fortunately, Parawire is very, very affordable. So let's go ahead and start make, making um, a ring because I think the best way to practice is to make uh, is to make stuff. So I am pulling off two and a half feet of 20 gauge wire and I'm hoping that that will be enough. I'm going to be making a size 9 ring and I'm going to be making it first without beads. So we're going to begin with an end spiral. I'm going to try to be zoomed in enough that it's not, my camera focus isn't freaking out. So I'm just going to make a little spiral on the end, starting with that little half shepherd loop or half, it's a shepherd's hook, like a half loop. And then just continuing in a little bit deeper. About like that. And you could make this stylistically. You can have your spirals be as tight or as loopy and airy as you like. It is totally personal preference. So I'm just grasping with my nylon gel pliers. Grasp and rotate, grasp and rotate, grasp and rotate. And grasp and rotate. I'm for the ring. I'm trying to not go over a quarter of an inch wide um, on the spirals, but if you do, that's fine. Like this is just. I just don't want it to be too wide. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna come in to about right here. I'm gonna hold 
that between my fingers and I'm going to flump around and that makes that little loop and wherever this loop is that's where our spiral is going to start building around so I'm going to grip it between my fingers and just start pulling that wire around and again keeping it sandwiched between my fingers helps keep it be very in line like very two-dimensional <clears throat> so there is that spiral and we're coming around and now I'm going to do it in the other direction so I want the little loop to happen right here and so we'll just loop around and coming back I'm going to put my finger and loop around really liking that and this one's going to be a little bit smaller and that's okay you don't have to make all of your spirals the same exact size i like a little bit of variation keeps things spicy and now we do have an option that if you want a little bit more control over where the center of your spirals um or maybe consistent sizing on the centers honestly i'm way more consistent with just using my hands doing the itsy bitsy spiral technique but you can use your round nose pliers to get that loop going. And then finish it off, bringing it in. And I'm building the wire on the front every time. Um, again, that's personal preference. It just helps me feel like I'm being consistent with our little loops that we're making. This one I'm gonna do a whole nother wrap around. There we go. Again, alternating kind of a smaller, larger, smaller, larger. I'm bringing that up like that. And again, positioning my fingers and twisting around. There's our little loop. And you can even tighten that down a little just by pulling on it. That tightens that little loop. Placing our fingers, going around. There we are. That's a nice wee bitty petite. Now, oh, my hands are cold. Um, let's go ahead and do two more. So there's our loop. And just twisting uh, is I do apologize for like I feel like my fingers are covering what's happening but it's so for me it's such an integral part of making this spiral because it keeps it being flat but our fingers are just doing the same thing that our nylon gel pliers were doing earlier in that it's keeping the spirals flat so again coming in putting our first loop down. Now down in the video description I do have linked a video to where we do like five easy wire wrap earring designs all of which include spirals and itsy bitsy spirals like this. Um, so if you'd like more practice and more specific um, spiral based designs uh, I'd really recommend that video. So I'm gonna just bring that down I'm going to try to do this one without covering my finger on it. But it also, having my finger over it, keeps it from getting too tight in some spots. And if things start getting stacked, you can come in with your uh, nylon jaw pliers and just kind of smush them. <laughs> Give it a good smush. Okay, I think I'm going to do one more. Whoops! Oh, I just kicked the tripod. So I'm going to do one more. And I'm going to start it by doing just a little bit of a bend with my fingernail where I think I want my loop to be. And then I'll put my fingers there on that and twist around and it makes that little loop. And then repositioning, Whoop, doing that twist again, makes another little loop. And then, yeah, like that. And, whoop, but holding on to that wire helps maintain that tension and if it overlaps just kind of back it up a bit so now let's zoom back out and let's come to our size 9 
on our ring mandrel and we're just going to start gingerly shaping this around with our um, fingers and ring mandrel. Now we could bring this down to about a nine, like an eight, but let's go ahead and do one more spiral. And that should get it up to being a size nine. And now what we're going to do with all the rest of this wire, most of the rings, ring designs that I make for in our booth or in our tutorials and stuff are adjustable. This one is not so adjustable because we're going to use all of the rest of this 20 gauge wire. And I'm going to do this off the mandrel because the ring mandrel is just very clunky and cumbersome sometimes. Um, I am going to come through and I want to join these two ends. So I'm going to bring this around and just start kind of whip stitching through our ring. So we've made that little loop around and now I want to come around this way. So I'm going around that edge and then around right here. And then we'll thread that through, bring that down, and I want to make a nice tight little loop around the ring band. And so, and for this one, we can actually go over two spirals, like it doesn't have to be just one every time, and then we can thread up. Like, this is where it can get really artistically expressive. But again, just doing that grounding loop. So again, on that one, we're going two spirals. And coming up. Now this one I'm actually going to do just one and then like that, but this spiral here is kind of lifted because that was our end spiral and I'm actually going to thread down through, no I'm not, I'm going to come around like this and I'm going to get that first little loop into place and then I am going to thread up and through from the back just because I want this to um, look on purpose and kind of, I don't know, intentional maybe. So now from here, we can come around, almost looping around where we already did on our first path through, but I'm going to do a lock, kind of like a lock stitch, I don't really know what else to call it, on that side. And then I'm going to come around two spirals on this side. And you could be adding beads, you could be adding coiling to this, all sorts of different stuff. Weaving, like the, the possibilities are infinite. Threading through right there. And then you can almost give it a really nice like braided look too. I'm really interested to see what you guys do with this because um, we can add just like how on this component we had added beads you can do that same thing with this ring you guys now that gets complicated because I'm about to whack this a whole bunch with a hammer and uh, whenever you have beads um, on your ring it gets complicated with the hammering and you can keep going till your wire is used up, or you can keep going just till you're happy. So I'm going to bring that around right there. But these rings can be very organic, very fun. 
is kind of almost the messier the better, even. And if you do something and you're like, you know, I really don't think that's my favorite, you can just trim it off. Okay, so there is that. Now, before trimming off the excess fire, I'm actually going to hammer this down and see if I like the way that it looks. So we've stretched it back out to a size 9, and I'm going to start with just the nylon head side of my hammer. And I just want to tap down all of our spirals, all of our lock stitches. Now this is going to spread our ring. Like now it's up to a size 11 and a half. <laughs> so uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, Sometimes our wires may get overlapped, in which case we can encourage them back into their location. And so you can kind of see this one's a little, a little more um, chaotic than what I had intended, but that's okay. You can come through and do another lock stitch. Every single one of these can come out completely different and that's part of the fun of it really. Okay, so this I think is going to be my last bind off. So I'm just grabbing the end of our wire because it's getting a little short for me to have enough to hold on with my hands. And again, just using my pliers to get that wire situated. And then I'm going to snip. And then I'm going to smush to make that end be tucked in with the other layers. And you can turn it so that whichever way that you like for it to face is... Oh, I like it as a thumb ring. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a bit big on me, <laughs> but that's okay. We're fixing to make another one just to get more practice. So again, coming through. And even with the 20 gauge, with it being a very uh, a much thinner wire, um, the work hardening and the amount that we've built it up does a really good job of getting it to um, stiffen up. So and that's always nice. Now also in alternate uh, use for something like this is we could take it and let's find a cabochon that maybe fits inside of it. So we've taken this, it has lots of those little overlappy loopy things. We can, I mean, it just keeps expanding for days. So <laughs> we can extend, expand it to the size that we want it to be. We can nestle a stone down in it as though it were a ring for the stone instead of our finger. And then from here, we can take some of these wires and we can press them in. I'm actually gonna use my wider flat nose pliers for this because we can bring that in. I'm just grabbing and bending, grabbing and bending, whoop. And once you have like three or four um, prongs, more or less, we can just smush that down. I'm actually going to bring, mm, I was going to just smush that one up, but we'll bring it around on the back. And now from here, we can press, don't do this with a softer stone, you don't want to break it. Um, this Labradorite is quite sturdy though. 
but we can take this and start pressing and encouraging it around to the front. So we could have made our spirals a little bit thicker. Uh, honestly, this wasn't a part of the plan at all. This is just what's happening. And so you can almost use the side of your pliers as a bezel roller. So what I'm doing is I'm starting here like this and then pressing around to the front. So again, coming around and pressing to the front. I'm trying really hard to not push from the back because I don't want to push the cab forward. So if you're able to get this up to where it's not just on your hands and you can take it and roll the wire around to the front, especially if you have nice tall spirals. For this thicker Labradorite cabochon, I really could have gone with uh, wider spirals, but eh. <laughs> again, I did not plan on this. This is just happening. So, and there we are with, oh my gosh, a beautiful, uh, very pleased with it bezel, actually. And if there's spots like this spot up here, it's not quite holding on as much as I would like. Um, we can take, where's the tool? I really like porcupine quills for stuff like this because you can take the, th the thicker tip without any worry of it scratching the stone. It's, it, it's not going to scratch the stone any more than what your fingernail would. But we can, whoop, oh, well, metal winds versus porcupine quill on this one. Ah, if I hadn't worked hardened it as much, I'm going to have to go with something a bit stouter. So I am going to use my plier tip to get in there and just push in a little bit more. So I don't want to, I'm so sorry it's blurry you guys, I'm doing my best. <clears throat> you could get in there with a dull pocket knife or something. Maybe, let's try. Here I have just the tip of a mandrel. No, it's not really wanting. Well, I was I was gonna try to loosen up one of these uh, wires kind of towards the front and press it <clears throat> out just a little bit more. There we go with our round nose pliers. And I'm just doing a little bit of a twist and it's gonna make a point on that spiral, but just enough that it's gonna let us get that wire out there to hold it. And now the next challenge is going to be um, getting a bale attached. But I'll show y'all how I'm going to do that. And that's if you just find one of the little like this loop right here isn't actually holding on to anything, so I'm just going to press that up and we could attach our loop right there. Oh my gosh. Y'all. <laughs> I am so pleased with this. I was going to make a finger ring and you can totally do this and make a finger ring, but ooh. <laughs> we did a thing. Um, so to make this into a bale, what I would do is with the same 20 gauge wire, um, I'm going to snip off three inches, which is generous, but it's better to be generous, I think, than stingy. And we could just use our round nose pliers. I'm going to come into the middle of our wire, more or less, <clears throat> and I'm going to press up and cross those wires to make a little loop. And now from here, I'm going to use the thickest part of my pliers, or you could use a knitting needle, or here I'm going to use the stick mandrel. And just putting it right like that, I'm going to press around on one side, and then I'm going to press in the opposite direction on the other side, and 
we may have enough wire that we can bring this around multiple times. Uh, it didn't seem like it, but... Down here at the base, I just want to snip. Boop. I put my thumb over it, but that was to keep the wire from popping off. Hopefully uh, this will make more sense when you see the finished piece. So just coming in right in line with that cross on what will be the bale. I'm just snip. There we go. So now from here, I want to angle that little end in, then flip it and angle that little end in. So let's, so just like that, but now we can attach it to our pendant and so we'll open and bring that out just a little. So see how it's like opening a key ring almost? And then we'll hook that onto our bale, bring it around. And just like that. And then we can use our flat nose pliers again to bring that little wire end in towards the center. I personally prefer to do this with an 18 gauge wire just to make it a little bit more sturdy but 20 gauge works all right and then I'm gonna smush those two pieces together and then come in with either my fingernail or some pliers and bow it out just a bit and I think that gives a really nice bale shape to our lab and I'm going to take an opportunity for shameless self-promotion. This is one of the labradorites that we, uh, like from the selection of what we put up into our weekly shop updates. So if you guys enjoy our free tutorials and you're wanting to get your hands on some high quality uh, gemstone infused glass cabochons, please check out our shop. We do weekly shop updates every Monday. Um, we do the tours on Mondays, but we post uh, sometimes as early as Sunday evening, and we send out uh, a newsletter to our Happy Crafter Club as soon as that shop update goes live, so all of our $1 and up supporters uh, get first dibs on um, the shop updates, but then, you know, we do do the video tour on Mondays, we do weekly giveaways, um, of our booty boxes we have a monthly subscription service if you'd like to use our fused glass in your artwork so i i want very much to get high quality cabs and high quality wire into y'all's hands for as affordable as possible and so we do carry um para wire on our website as well though uh our stock varies um so if you're shopping and you want to get some wire go to parawire.com uh, I actually have a video showing how I shop on parawire because the website can be a little uh once you know how it works it's very easy to navigate but if you've never shopped on there before it can kind of like feel like walking into a department store and not knowing where to go so um we did a video tour so that you can find the exact colors of wire that I enjoy using most um it is, I hope that that's helpful to you guys, but yeah, so that's probably the best way to support our channel is um, to just check out the shop updates and that way, I mean, you know, it keeps us in business and it gets you some super juicy cabs. So I just, I really like this setting, you guys. Like what a happy, like stumbled into accident. Like you can literally, you can see this is my show notes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so advanced but I was just gonna make a ring <laughs> so let's try that again with beads this time and let's um let's try doing it as a bezel setting for ooh, this which is one of our fused glass cabochons that I swiped this one before the shop update at the time of recording because I just I was so pretty I was like okay I have to keep this one <laughs> so um let's make a ring for this like a bezel so because again the techniques will remain exactly the same for this last one whether you wanted to make it into a bezel or a ring like if you just wanted it as a ring we could have stopped after sizing it um but as a bezel gosh I just I love that
the only thing I'd change is I'd maybe make the that part that front wires a little bit more prominent but again yeah it's in there well, you'd, you'd really have to be trying to get the stone out mmm <laughs> so organic and flowy well excellent okay um my hands are cold let's see so for that one if we used um two and a half feet I'm gonna go ahead and do four feet four maybe four and a half feet of wire now that's way more than uh what i think we'll need but i'd rather have way more than not enough and we're going to be doing beads on this one so let me get just a few things out of the way and i'm actually going to zoom out because the hand positioning for stuff like this i feel like is so important and i'm going to start in line So we've threaded a bead on. I'm going to put my fingertips. Oh, and I just had an idea. Okay. So yeah, we're starting with an inline. So, and I'm just doing, flipping it over, putting my fingertips, making that spiral. Putting my fingertips, making that spiral. So it was three rotations. So now I'm going to find the whole end of the wire, grab a bead, thread it on. pulling it all the way down there we go and now I was doing my right finger on top so now to get it to get the spiral to go the other way we're gonna have we're gonna flip the work over <laughs> so just holding that in place right there fingertips together and turn ah and see it put the wire behind the vine, so to speak. So like if it's, if each of these little spirals is a flower on the vine, I want the vine itself to be behind the flower, just because I, I like the way that that looks better. That's just me personally though. So now we're bringing that around to the front. Pinch and turn, pinch and turn as an alternative to um, the itsy bitsy spiral. So now coming all the way down to the end again, putting a bead on, threading it all the way through, and fingertips together, and twist, flip, and twist, flip, and twist. Very good, you guys. Now, and you can probably hear off camera, my the long tail of my wire is just freaking out. So it's hitting everything. <clears throat> like if the cat were down here, she'd be losing her darn mind. Uh, and that's just something to be mindful of, but it's okay. Okay, threading another bead on. And threading it all the way down. I don't know what's going on with the neighbor's dog. Okay, I'm flipping the work with my left finger on top. But if you hear like yipping, um, I don't know. I, I think the neighbor's dog is like upset. Like it's been going on for a few days and I'm not certain. Uh, I think that like our dogs, they just don't like being home alone. And I think the neighbor has to go to work. So... <clears throat> So that's four spirals and they're getting bigger and bigger so I think I'm gonna do this next one not as big like not as many layers just to add in some variety and I'm leaving this tail wire loose because I think we'll be able to avoid having to thread through our first uh, spiral like how we did right here because anywhere that the wire's overlapping and then I hammer, granted we're not going to be hammering this one because it'll just crush the beads, um, it, the wire will pinch onto itself. So, okay, getting the sips one, and then two, 
and you can just squish them together and start stacking things. And the nice thing about spirals is just embrace the chaos, you guys. Like, the, the <laughs> uh, perfectionism can sometimes hinder creativity. And I think making wire wrapped spirals is definitely one of those instances where it's like, let it be what it is and just keep practicing and experimenting and seeing what happens. So there, one and two. And I just, I love it because it's just a little row of bloop, bloop, bloop spirals. And, but the core of this is to teach the technique of doing the itsy bitsy spiral of being able to get consistent um, looping results by just placing the bead or wherever it is the bead helps me visualize like okay that's gonna be where our loop is and then you put your fingers together and you do not bring them apart as you twist and flip and it just it makes that perfect little perfect little loop every time like every time and there's no pliers to be biting the wire so there's no marred up plier marks in your work at least so far in this piece because I haven't touched it with pliers yet but we'll get there and so with this being the case let's we'll just use our stone as the mandrel and it looks like we're about a hair under halfway there and that's okay so we can count one two three four five six seven so let's try just six more and I'm gonna see if maybe one two three four five and six beads now these are size eight dynamite uh, seed beads um the sizing on them is like they're a nice bead but if you're doing like loom work and stuff the inconsistencies in the bead size and shape can be like maddening i love it though because they were very affordable and i like the uh whenever i'm just stringing them i think it adds a whole lot more visual interest um to pieces like this one to have the beads be a little you know wonky and weird so just something options <laughs> Because you can completely change the look of this by using like maybe a 10 to 15 millimeter uh, coin bead. Like that would be very interesting actually. Okay, and then coming around, placing that other bead. Oh yeah, this is so much faster than re-threading. And I'm just holding these other beads in the same hand where I'm normally holding the wire for tension purposes anyways. So just moving that bead up and coming around. I think this one I'm going to go ahead and do a third rotation on just to beef it back up. Bringing that in and coming around. Then our last two beads, I may do this one and then start sizing it to see if it's a good size yet. <clears throat> oh no, yeah, we're going to need a couple more. Okay. <laughs> but no harm in measuring multiple times. So there's that. Sorry, I don't mean to pop my knuckles in your ear, but whenever it's cold like this and I'm moving my hands, just they need popped. Okay, so we're going to place one more. But like, as you can see, you can do this all day. You can do this for miles, like <laughs> until you run out of wire. Um, or beads. 
So bringing it around, it looks like we can do, I'm going to stop here. And so what I'm going to do from this point is try to find something um, that is the size of our cab. Oop, too big. And this is where having multiple pill bottles, multiple uh, different shapes and sizes of bead containers, none of which apparently I have. <laughs> Ruh -roh. Okay. Um. Boop, boop, boop. Close enough. So I have this stack of beads. I'm actually going to take off the top one. And this is mostly just so I can have something to shape around that's a, got a little bit more to hold on to than just the, uh, this is still way too big. Crap. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So I am using, these are some cookie cutters um, that I use for making polymer clay. And it's just they're the closest thing I have to something that's like a bunch of different sizes to choose from. And they're not particularly sharp. Like, I'm not going to be like slicing my hand open with them, hopefully. Um, but I just finding the one that's closest to size, I think, is going to work out pretty well. So I'm going to use this as the mandrel. Just coming through. Okay, there. But the wire really does get tangled on just about everything. And I, oh, I feel so clever doing this, like, which I've had these tools for years, but here we are. Um, and so from here, we can come around. And I'm almost wishing that I had left this wire just as long as the wire on the other side, because then we'd just be able to do the, um, like, opposing braid plate. So... I'm going to bring this around and we can even do a little bit of a training bend in our wire and what I mean by that is to come in and go like boop and just doing a little 90 degree bend and now whenever we thread our wire through That bend is already there and it makes it so much easier to be purposeful in where your wire is ending up. So give me just a sec to set. I'm getting tangled on everything. So I am just setting all my tools back where they go. Okay. That should that should help. Oop. Okay, so now when my wire gets marred up, I like to press with my thumbnail. Just like that. And it's easier said than done, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. Oh man, that really cinched it down. But we can get in there with our either our thumbnails or you could have like a little tool. But we'll bring that around. And I want to leave enough of a loop. So I want my bend to be right there. And you can just do it with your fingernails. You don't have to use your pliers. Um, Sometimes using pliers is exactly what my hands want to do, and sometimes the pliers just feel clunky and in the way. So I just go go with the flow of it day by day. So we'll make another little lock stitch. Curving that wire, bringing it around. Do our training bend. And feeding the wire through the center. And we may actually end up needing to splice in, like add in more wire, which would be a great opportunity just to demonstrate how to do that. So again, skipping two. Let's go ahead, do that training bend. And feeding all of that wire through you just I, you want to be careful with it because I don't want to get any kinks in the wire because those can be kind of tricky to get out 
and I'm only really worried about shaping and removing the kinks and stuff from the section that we're going to be doing next because I don't want to overly work harden the rest of our wire. So there's that training bend. <laughs> Bumping the tripod, sorry y'all. And cinching that down. And again, just in case you've, um, you're just coming into this part of the video, I'm using a 20 gauge wire. Uh, Para wire does not market their enameled copper as specifically dead soft or half hard or anything like that. I personally, to my hands, para wire feels a little harder than dead soft, but like if the spectrum between dead soft and half hard, if right here is halfway between dead soft and half hard, it's a little pair of wire falls like in this area. So, um, but that can vary from color to color and from spool to spool. Currently I'm using their titanium tone in 20 gauge and a spool that I have of this or had of this, I think I finally used it up. No, I didn't. It's still sitting over there looking at me. Uh, is very, very stiff for some reason. I don't know. Um, but it's very rare that I get a stiff spool of wire from Para Wire. And whenever I do, I just use that one for when I'm doing wire wrapped links, like a bead links, like in lesson one of our master class. Um, and it's totally fine. Like it's perfect for that. So whereas this spool of the 20 gauge is perfectly supple and, you know, so, uh, as with all things, there's some natural variation. Sorry, I don't mean to wander out of frame. I'm just trying to not hit the tripod. Okay, so now we're coming around full circle again. And we've got a little bit of... Yeah, I guess that worked out perfect. Okay, I was worried that like we were like off one. But I'm just gonna come around to right here where we did our first um, lock stitch and I'm gonna give it a bend and I'm gonna feed through. And lock that down. So now we get to start making the loops on the other side. And that'll be just perfect, I think, because we want to be able to uh, secure this to the front and the back. And so having enough wire that it'll just kind of do that. Also, it's getting a lot easier because this is getting work hardened and it's much stiffer now. So just bringing that up and I'm sandwiching it quite firmly between my fingers. Coming around. Oop. Yeah, if there's something within the wires radius of you, it's going to snag it and that's okay. Normally when I do projects like this, um, I've actually never done this uh, bezel setting before, um, not specifically like this, um, but normally if I'm doing something, it's just that's snagging everything, I'll just scooch my chair out into the middle of the room to just uh, remove obstacles. Okay, coming through, doing that twist, coming through, doing that twist. I'm going to give you guys just a little bit more of a slower close-up. I'd like to get behind that wire. Shape that out a little bit. Because I'm not entirely certain. I think that wire might become part of our bale, though I don't know. In fact, yeah, let's go ahead. Because if I lift up on this one, you can see that that link separates, so this wire has to get grounded. To the rest of the piece so just by doing a single lock wire now that's stable that part right there looks like a little owl face and i love it <laughs> okay so 
we could stop here and make that the bale and piece this onto our cab. And I think we just might, but know that you can use, you know, let's, let's do that. We're going to come through and we're going to do another layer just to double up and I'm having it extend even further past just like that. And I'm just threading through the center and then that lets me fold up and do another loop just on that side. And so we'll come through the center there. So it's from the outside to the inside each time. And then coming up, because we've already kind of done a lock stitch on the previous layer. So this one, I'm just wanting to get some wire laid down. So coming through the middle there. Trying to be consistent about the distance that that's stacking coming up coming through this would be a perfect layer to do some coiling and stuff or maybe add some really fine seed beads that'd be cool and then coming around coming up Coming around, and I think that does us. This will be our last, so I'm going to thread through here in the middle, and that will be our bail when we feel like getting around to making that. But for now, I'm going to grab our petite flat nosed pliers. You could just use regular old flat-nosed, but I like that I can get these in in tight places, and I'm going to come around on the back first, which the back on this one is the side that just has one wire instead of the side that has two wires, and I'm going to do a 90 degree bend by grabbing the side of the loop where it protrudes past the uh, bezel frame, and I'm going to bend inward. So see how that kind of brought that in like so? <clears throat> And so we could even take it and just go like that, but that's not quite as purposeful as what I would like. So I really want it nice and bent in. Okay, so I'm going to continue around. And this side, you can see it's a little like tangled. That's okay. Like, and by tangled, I mean it's just kind of on top of the other spiral. I'm just pushing it with my fingernail. <laughs> there goes my manicure. <laughs> but yeah, just kind of bringing it in, doing a bend, grabbing, doing a bend. And I just want to get these shaped around because, again, this is a very organic, soft, um, not no harsh geometric lines. There could be. You could totally make bold intentional geometric lines um but it's good to be okay with things being a little soft and a little flowy and a little out of your control and chaotic so now we will place that in and you can see that has made a netting there on the back kind of just a little edge and it's not perfect we could Actually, that's pretty we, we have to distort the piece to get that out and so what I'm gonna do from here is we can take this and you can see poking like that just achieves and scratching our wire when that happens I try to just like buff it out a little bit you can like uh, burnish it down with your fingernail but just take in your wire and pressing inward just and press 
and that's deepening that lobe that will be holding on to the back of our cabochon. There we go. <clears throat> and now we get to do the fun part, which is pressing around these wires onto the front of our stone. Which I'm just doing with the pad of my thumb to start with. And if it's a little baggy and loose, I'm just going to take it and smush, literally just smush it out. Now, our stone turns pretty freely, but that's okay. Because now on this front part, we can, right here, place our pliers. You could use your round nose pliers as well. You can see I'm, hopefully, you can see I'm coming in past the tip of my pliers and just pressing. So placing there, well past the tip. That way I'm not risking my pliers sliding off. Coming in and pressing, turn, and press, and press, 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 just all the way around. And you can see like that spot right there that's kind of baggy. That's okay. We can actually come in, take it on the back side, and I'm just going to turn inward and tuck that behind like that. So you can totally come in and tighten stuff down significantly actually so I'm going to tighten down the back as well and it becomes a little bit of a vicious push and tug um, but it doesn't have to but it can and I'm just smushing with my fingers so I think it would be better to do two layers on the back as well as in the front but this is this is still going to hold pretty well and i really really like that stone so now the next step is we are going to make our bail so i am separating the little bunny ears the two wires coming off of our pendant and I am going to use my nylon gel pliers to just straighten and work harden that wire out. I'm going to use the barrel of my stick mandrel to bend around and off to the side and we're going to do this like it's a wrapped loop. So I'm going to wrap just once to start with and then I'm going to grab my pliers so I can hold on to that little end and continue wrapping around and then smush that tail so that there's no pokey bits protruding from our pendant I, I personally like splitting the bail just so that it looks a little, I don't know, artsy fartsy. I like it. And now from here, I'm going to make an itsy bitsy spiral right there. So I'm going to click that and do our twist. And that's the beginning of our loop. Sizing it down just a little with my thumb. And then coming around, I'm pretty happy with just that. And now I'm going to wrap this around. If that's the body and the bail is the head, we just wrapped a scarf around the neck. And we'll get that smush, 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 smush. You don't have to use up all your wire like this. I just like the way 
it looks in sets. So there we are. Now, if you want things tighter still, we can come in because I don't like any wiggle. Like, I don't want my stone to be able to, like, uh, wiggle its way out. So I'm going to take <clears throat> my round nose pliers and I'm going to just start bending and I'm putting it in and then turning it like a key in a lock. And this is adding a point to each of these lobes. And that's going to help us to hold a little bit more stable there on the back. Just because it's tightening, adding tension to that wire. And just like that. Just a little, there we go. A little bit. We, we can get it to wiggle again. But, um just doing that in and of itself and we can even put our pliers quite wide and bring the tips together but that gets tricky because if your pliers slip it can nick the uh the wires oh yeah fortunately that one didn't but i'm pushing my luck and there we are a very cute little wire wrapped spirally pendant and the 20 gauge, well, it worked really well on this one because we were able to hammer and work harden it. On this piece, since I wasn't able to work harden it, I really think it would have been a better idea for me to have used an 18 gauge as and just gone up a size in the seed beads, possibly. But, uh, I don't know. More experimentation is recommended and you could add in layers and layers and layers of wire everything past this point your stone is secure and there's a place where you can hang it everything past here is just fun so I do hope that this was helpful to, to you guys if you've sorry it's my voice is given out again I, I lasted most of the tutorial on this one um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I really do love hearing from you guys. And um, again, if you'd like to uh, support the channel and the creation of more free tutorials, uh, all the links for everything are down in the video description below, as well as a video tour of our booty boxes and an introduction of what those are. If you're interested in interested in a monthly subscription we do our weekly shop updates on monday um we do live streams every friday where we also have an after party which is a cool perk for uh club members but more than anything i want you guys to know you don't need to sign up for anything to get continued access uh to our free tutorials our tutorials will always be free and will always be available like this isn't going to be up for a limited time or anything like that um so yeah i think that's everything you guys so i will see y'all next time and until then happy crafting Mwah! bye <laughs>